Thank you for joining us for our monthly webinar series from Local Market Monitor, where we take a closer look at this month's National Economic Outlook, which was written by Local Market Monitor's President Ingo Windsor. For those of you that don't know Ingo, he has been analyzing real estate markets for over 30 years and is a graduate of MIT and Boston University. He's not your typical economist and has a knack for taking complex data, extracting what is important, and providing unique insights and tangible guidance on real estate markets. So with that, I bring you Ingo and his insights on the economy. Thanks very much, Carolyn. We usually spend a lot of time looking at economic data to get a handle of what may happen in real estate markets. That's why we look at jobs and population growth and income growth and the balance between renters and homeowners in local markets. All these things affect the demand for housing and the level of home prices. But this month, we're trying to explain a surge in home prices in markets across the country that is not connected to economic data. It seems to be a pandemic phenomenon and we don't know how it will evolve. This is what I'm talking about. The chart shows the increase in home prices every quarter compared to the same quarter of the previous year, measured by the FHFA Home Price Index. Already last year, during the worst part of the pandemic, we could see home prices rising at a faster clip. I thought just the opposite would happen, that the recession would slow demand for housing as recessions usually do. Instead, that was the beginning of the surge we are now seeing. This might make sense in some markets like Salt Lake City, where the economic recovery has been strong. The left chart on this page shows the increase in home prices, just like the national chart we just saw. The right chart shows the growth in jobs compared to pre-pandemic levels. In Salt Lake City, the recession is basically over, and it's easy to understand that strong demand would boost home prices. The population of Salt Lake City grew 1% last year, which may not sound like a lot, but it translates into a lot of people who need housing. The same is true in Austin. Again, the chart of job growth shows the recession is basically over. And last year, the population here grew 3%. Normally that would not push prices up 20%, but at least it's plausible. But now let's look at a market where the recession is not over and where the population has not grown, Reading, Pennsylvania. How can we explain that home prices in Reading jumped 13% in the last 12 months? This is not a special case. This is what many markets across the country look like right now. And this is why the national surge in prices is so difficult to understand. There are many possible pandemic explanations for this surge in prices. People switching from apartments to houses, people buying second homes to escape to, people accumulating down payments because they can't spend money, people buying investment properties because interest rates are low, people spending time at online real estate sites and a host of others. Altogether, these might result in such unusual demand that home prices go through the roof, but that's not the case. About five and a half million homes, cha homes changed hands in 2020, just a few hundred thousand more than in previous years. And the tally so far suggests the number this year will be under 6 million. So that's not unusual. The last time we had a national run-up in home prices in 2007, 8 million homes were sold. So 6 million isn't that much. My own belief is that the accelerator of prices has been weak supply. In the midst of a pandemic and with greater financial insecurity, many people just don't want to sell their home and move. If that's the case, then strong bidding on the few homes available will push prices up to the point that more supply will follow. And as we know from the past momentum of home prices, once they start going higher, they keep going higher until demand slows. The problem with all these scenarios, including my own, is that we have no evidence for any of them, and therefore we don't know what will happen next. I'm pretty confident that surge in prices will fade soon because home prices need to be in sync with average income levels and income levels have not increased, but I don't know when. Booms take on a life of their own. This leaves us with the big question for bankers and investors, will home values be permanently higher? Should they make more home equity loans? Should they fund speculation in properties? In my opinion, the answer is no. Now let's look again at some hard data and see how the recession and recovery are going. Overall, the recovery is stuck very likely the result of new COVID infections. But jobs in business services, one of the most important sectors of the economy, 
are back to their pre-pandemic level. This is a really good sign that the economy will quickly do better as soon as COVID is under control, which is now a political rather than a public health issue. Jobs in finance are already there, as are jobs in construction. Although it's a smaller sector of the economy, construction is likely to produce wide accessibility to new jobs. <clears throat> Retail jobs are back to normal, but that just means back to zero. Manufacturing jo jobs are stuck. COVID is a big problem in many industries where workers are close together. In healthcare, jobs have returned to doctors and dentist offices, but not at hospitals and nursing homes. In the large government sector, which is mainly local government, improvement will depend heavily on schools, while large numbers of children are not vaccinated. And restaurants also are still at the mercy of the pandemic. That's it. To finish, let me plug our investors metro analysis, which shows how local economic conditions affect investments in real estate. It shows the favored range of rents at the zip code level and our local job sector analysis that can predict which markets will do best as the recovery proceeds. It's available for any of 200 markets and is easy to use as one, two, three. Thanks very much for following along. This is our National Economic Outlook. I'm Inga Windsor.